Welcome back to the program. It used to be a tough pub trivia question. Who's the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia? Well, for the past two and a half years, our second in charge has been a bloke most Australians have never heard of. The always decent, dependable and hard-working Warren Truss. Until he retired a few days ago, Warren was best known for being unknown. Which brings us to his successor, Barnaby Joyce. This new Mr Second in Charge craves attention. He loves being known around the world as a politician who wanted to exterminate Johnny Depp's two puppies, Pistol and Boo. Barnaby's critics reckon he's an embarrassing, loud-mouthed madman. But after spending a few days with him, I think maybe that's exactly what Australian politics needs. Barnaby, is your job, as the Americans would say, just a heartbeat away from no, ultimate power. People have been watching too much West Wing. You've got to stop it. You know? <laughs> you know, there's this crap, you know, and this idea that, oh, well, you know, the Prime Minister's away, so we'll invade New Zealand. It's just bat... You guarantee you won't do that? Invade New Zealand? Yeah, this is a promise. That's, that's yeah, at we're... least a war we might win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, beautiful day for a drive in the country. Yeah, absolutely. I got to know our new Deputy Prime Minister a week ago on a road trip across his sprawling 60,000 square kilometre electorate of New England. One bullet, one scotch, and one gun. I was looking at someone, someone, you did. You look like the fellow off Wolf Creek, Wolf Creek. We ended up at the Dungowan pub in the heart of Barnaby country. Uh, I've a tea bag, medium rare, pepper sauce and veggies and chips. Barnaby is most at home chewing the fat. With folk who are sometimes a country mile to the right of the rest of Australia. Ah. Now I guess your blokes would all be dyed in the wool national supporters. There's not too many Labor voters around here, I can assure you. <laughs> we want what's best for the country. It's all gone back into the community. There was so much community involvement. Exactly. That? On this Saturday night at the Dungowan, the election of a new leader of the National Party is still a week away. 80% of our taxation goes into the welfare chain. But for his friends and his wife Natalie and daughter Bridget, there's a sense that Barnaby the Bush Maverick is on the verge of greatness. And they, they're out of work. You say, well, I'll give you a job. I'll give you a job. Here we go. Is ambition all right as far as you're concerned? In Australia, we tend to think you don't talk about that. Yeah, well, have you ever said someone say, oh, I want to live in the worst house in the street? Um, I want to marry a complete and utter fool. <laughs> um, I want to buy a car and hope it breaks down. Of course, people want to do the best. And don't you want for your nation people who are going to strive to do the best? Welcome to Canberra. Oh, hi. How does it feel to finally be here? Um, good, good. It's, uh... From his first day in Parliament ten years ago... Good up. Tony reckons if I get my ass into a saddle, I can't cause any problems. But just watch me, Tony. Barnaby's colourful but blunt country style won him media attention. AU486 is going to kill mothers. And I'll be uh, supporting traditional form of marriage and not redefining it. I'm going to stop the tax! I'm going to stop the tax! I'm going to stop the tax! Sometimes he gave the impression... In a very torrid game tonight. ...of being a little bit mad. A pack of kill canaries. <laughs> Bill Shorten is definitely going to win, and you can trust me. <laughs> Your political enemies say that you're a, a loose cannon, oh. a risky bloke for this job. What do you say to them now? I, th I think at times people, uh, they just don't, they just want you out, and they will say anything. I mean, the, the, the art of political derision is to find any accusation and fire it at a person. That is politics. And you play into their hands sometimes because you are. And as I'm, a journalist, I find it delightful. I mean, I'm not, you say what you think. Because I'm not politically correct. Yeah. Okay, well, so, uh, uh, you know, if you had a choice between loose cannon and liar, I think I'll, I'll but rather loose cannon. It's dawn last Thursday on what will prove the most important day in Barnaby Joyce's political life. By day's end, he'll be Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. But right now, as far as he knows, this is just another morning in politics. Front page, you can't get better than that, can you? I don't know. It can be a good sign or a very, very, very bad one. 
news is that after 26 years in Parliament, the leader of the National Party, Warren Truss, clearly dreaming of a life after politics, may resign. A lively debate, not lively enough for Deputy Prime Minister Warren Truss. And according to the pundits, who better to replace him than Barnaby? A little bit of a smile out here. The only national with whom the nation is on first name terms. Especially after an international dogfight with this actor. It's time that Pistol and Boo buggered off back to the United States. The dogs were named Pistol and Boo, and their owner, Hollywood star Johnny Depp, had thoughtlessly flown them into the country in his private jet without quarantine papers. Why don't we just break the laws for everybody? Barnaby stuck to his guns and threatened to destroy the canine contraband. Or we're going to have to euthanise them. Barnaby not only upset Johnny Depp, but also a certain household full of fans, his own household. The girls were most upset. They were like, how am I going to get to meet him now? <laughs> I killed my dogs and ate them under direct orders from some sweaty, big gutted man from Australia. Thank you. Very what did he call Barnaby? Oh, a sweaty, fat gutted politician, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, which is. That could have been anybody in Parliament. That could have been anybody in Parliament. But um, I don't think he's a fat gutted, sweaty <laughs> politician. But Barnaby has plenty of homegrown enemies too, like the former member for New England, the independent Tony Windsor. Define Barnaby Joyce in just a few succinct lines for me. <laughs> You've done it before, uh, famously. Well, I think he's terribly erratic. He doesn't have a policy mind. He's not interested in policy. He's interested in politics and diversionary uh, tactics. You once unkindly described him in the newspaper article as a goose. Well, he's all over the place like a duck's lunch. <laughs> in terms of, says one thing one minute. Uh, yeah, I, love you know, those, I love those country aphorisms. <laughs> provides amusement to a city audience that doesn't understand regional issues. He doesn't provide leadership in terms of any of those issues. He's looking backwards and he's coming from the backwoods. Tony Windsor echoed the view of the anyone but Barnaby faction as it became a near certainty that Warren Truss would resign earlier than expected. I'm convinced there are three people who know what Truss is up to. One would be uh, Lynn, his wife, Trussie, and God. We're just making our mind up whether he's told God yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday morning, and Barnaby allows our cameras to record his historic day unfolding. Uh, Warren's going to address the chamber at 12.30, followed by the Prime Minister, and then you'll be speaking. All right, we better prepare for that. OK, thanks. Thanks, that Di. Hey. Hey, Fiona. Hi. Not bad. Not That's bad. Very good. It's going to be, um, an interesting day. Senator Fiona Nash, who would end the day as Barnaby's deputy, arrived to talk leadership strategy. I think there's a, a feeling all around the building um, throughout the coalition that we want to bring conjecture to an end and just get to a happy landing spot. I'm sure we're going to do that. All right. How are you? Yeah, good. A steady stream of supporters come and go. I'm happy to take input from you, right? Offering advice and encouragement. Warren's done so much for the party that he certainly would deserve a Rolex watch, but I don't think we can afford one. <laughs> All right. OK, thanks, mate. I really appreciate that. The clincher comes mid-morning. Barnaby. Michael. The only other possible contender for the job, the member for Riverina, Michael McCormick... Have a seat. Now is your time. ..throws in the towel and pledges his support for Barnaby. I have had some of my colleagues uh, urging me, a lot of my colleagues, urging me to, uh, to, to give it a go. But uh, look, at the end of the day, mate, uh, you'll, you'll be great. I think it's destiny that you should lead our party. Um, Yesterday, McCormick was a bitter opponent. Today, they are allies Another. for now. Look, you know, it's your turn. Uh, you were meant for this. Um, my turn might come later. I hope it does. Appreciate that. I really Good, on you, Good on you, mate. Okay. The Deputy Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, uh... At 12.30, Warren Truss announced his resignation to Parliament. But now that I'm numbered amongst the oldest, 
I think it's time to go. Thank you. In the hour before, Barnaby had crafted his own speech to honour the previous leader, but at the same time, to stake his own claim to the job. Hubris. <laughs> Hubris. Hubris. You might be surprised to know that our new Deputy PM has a good grasp of English literature. It's Julius Caesar. There comes a tide in the affairs of men which, which taken take at the flood, flood leaves a fortune leaves... omitted from one's life, leaves one bound in the, in the, the miseries and shallows, isn't That's it? That's right, the miseries and shallows. Barnaby, who would know this about you? Um, Your not opponents many. try to say you're some kind of dog killing bogan. Uh, most politicians note Shakespeare's advice. There is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. I watched Barnaby's great Shakespearean moment with his wife and daughter. That was my line. Barnaby was about to become deputy Congratulations, Barnaby. To, my pleasure. Congratulations. to the man whose leadership he'd initially opposed. A very formidable team. He had been Abbott's man, now he's Turnbull. I'm, I'm very pumped up. A loose cannon is harnessed and in loyal service to the Prime Minister. If there were to be another challenge by the disaffected liberal right against Malcolm Turnbull... I would protect Malcolm Turnbull. You would protect him. That's yes. a guarantee? The job of the deputy is always to protect the leader. Uh, that, that is what you do. But you were Abbott's man. And I, I did my best to look after Abbott. The job of the deputy is to protect the leader. And if you can't do that, if you can't fulfil that job, don't be the deputy. His job demands he must straddle the great Australian divide, the city and the bush, the two worlds of Barnaby Joyce. He's gone as high as a country politician can go, but if his head is in Canberra, there's no doubt where his heart is. When you die, there'll be no one from politics standing around your bed. Everybody will stand in the parliament for a minute and then someone will look beside and say, who is that person? You have no illusions. I have no illusions. And I always say to my wife, the moment it all looks uh, wrong or awkward, you just jerk me straight out of this place. Barnaby, thank you very much and congratulations on your elevation to greatness. Thank you, Giles.